In this video, I'm going to show you how to take a newly purchased Ender 3 version 2, assemble it and set it up ready for your first print. I'll cover every stage in detail so you can be confident that your printer is built in the best way possible to avoid problems down the line. As these printers are supplied as kits, unfortunately it is possible to assemble them wrong and give yourself some headaches. Let's jump straight in so I can show you what you need to know. First, let's see what you get inside the box. The Ender 3 version 2 is well packaged with bespoke foam that keeps everything protected. The top foam lifts out with a little wiggle and you can see your 3D printed kit. Sitting on top is the assembly instructions, sitting on your print bed. Down the side you have some aluminium extrusions, these are for the frame. Then we have the XE axis kit. This holds the stepper motors for the X axis and the extruder, hence the XE. Then we have the display with control knob and part of the filament holder. The nozzle kit comes attached to the main base of your printer so you have to be careful not to drop it as you wiggle the printer base out of the packaging. The other part of the filament holder is the last part from this foam layer, but there's more underneath. On the next layer, we have a power cable, more aluminium extrusion, a Z-axis stepper motor, a bag of tools, a part called the Z-axis passive block, a bag with filament and other gubbins in, an X-axis tensioner, and finally a scraper. Lay everything out neatly in a clear area like a tabletop so that you can see what you have. There are lots of parts to assemble and you don't want to be losing anything. I open up the bag with the paperwork and have a look what you have. You have the usual warranty card and promo stuff, but what we're really interested in is the user manual. The manual's not bad and you'll want to keep it handy as I'll be referring back to it at points through the build, even though we won't be following everything in the exact order of the manual. This is because there are a few things you need to check to ensure your printer is set up in the best way and often the parts are easier to access early in the build. The first thing I suggest you do is remove the build plate. This is the flat plate that the printed part will sit on. It's held on by two clips that slide off with a little persuasion. Removing it ensures that it isn't damaged while you assemble the rest of the frame. The first thing I wanted to check on my printer was the tension of the rollers that the bed moves back and forth on. Straight away I found an issue that certainly would have caused me problems if I had simply followed the manual. The adjusters had been tightened far too tight when the printer was manufactured. This was actually so bad that there were now flat spots on each wheel where it had been rammed up so hard into the extrusion rails. Usually, if the printer's assembled correctly, it's just a case of turning the adjusters with a spanner to loosen the tension. Unfortunately, the bolts on mine were also far too tight, so I decided to remove the whole bed to gain better access. Try sliding your bed back and forward. It should slide pretty smoothly with no points where the bed stops. If it does, you'll need to loosen the adjusters. Try turning one direction to try and reduce the tension on either the front or the rear adjuster, access from the right hand side. If you struggle to turn the adjusters, just do the same as me and remove the bed. All it takes is winding off the four large bed adjustment knobs until they fall off. The bed lifts off. Be careful not to lose the springs. Here you can see just how stiff the bed was on my printer. I now have better access so I can try the adjusters again. I also disconnected the belt so that I can make sure I got the tension right without the stepper motor confusing things. I still wasn't happy so I took the adjusters apart completely to make sure they weren't permanently damaged. Thankfully they were okay so reassembling without over tightening allowed me to get the tension I wanted. If you have this issue with the rollers then make sure you loosen all the adjusters to the point where you can turn all the wheels and then move them all to random positions. This way it will be a series of small flat spots and the printer won't want to stop in the same place all the time. The rollers will recover their round shape after a couple of hours once the tension is reduced. The bed will be at the correct tension when you can just about turn each roller by hand but there is no movement in the bed from side to side. Try to gently twist the carriage to see if you have any play. Reattach your belt if you removed it like me. If you also remove the bed like me, place it back in position, remembering to fit the springs over the screws as you go. The left rear corner spring is slightly shorter than the rest because of the cable strain relief bracket. Spin the adjuster knobs back on and tighten each one until you feel some resistance and then stop. Once your bed is reassembled, rotate the printer base so you can get to the bolts at the side of the frame. You'll often find that one or more of these is loose, so check that all of them are tight with the printer on a flat surface. Once you've checked one side, turn the base around and check the other side. Make sure that with a printer on a flat surface, there's no wobble in the feet. If there is, slacken the bolts on one side and push any high corners down while you tighten the bolts back up. Doing this now will ensure your printer frame starts with a solid square base. Once you're happy with this, carefully tilt your base so that you can get to the four bolts on the bottom. Be very careful not to drop your nozzle assembly. Once these four bolts are tight, we can start assembling the frame. Find the larger of the two sets of extrusions and remove the plastic packaging. Note that these two lengths are not identical and have holes in different positions. Also, down the middle of one, you'll find your Z-height lead screw inside a protective sleeve. It's very important that this doesn't get damaged, so put it back in its sleeve any time it's not attached to your printer. Place the extrusion with the wide spaced holes on the right and the one with the two holes close together on the left. Now place your printer base in the middle. We're now working on stage one of installation from the user manual. Find the five M5 by 45 screws in the bag that has the filament. You'll only need four of these, the fifth is a spare. 
Start by attaching the left-hand side. This part can get a bit fiddly, so you may want someone to help you. The M5 screws need to be pushed up from the bottom and screwed into the bottom of the aluminium extrusions. Note the position of the holes in the extrusions. On the left, the two holes need to be at the bottom. You'll find Allen keys for all fasteners in the supplied bag of tools. Be careful not to pinch the wires and don't do these bolts up tight. You need to be able to move the extrusion slightly. If in doubt, nip them up and then undo them both about three quarters of a turn. While you're on this side, find your Z-axis limit switch in the same bag that the screws were in. Loosen the bolts with the T-nuts on the back, but don't remove them completely. These nuts slot into the side of the vertical extrusion as shown. When you tighten the bolts, the nuts on the back should turn and grip the extrusion. Have a good look at how these work as there are more later and these are the easiest. Nip the bolts up, but they don't need to be really tight. They just need to be tight enough so that the bracket can't move when you push on it. Now you can plug in the two wire cable labeled Z or Z to the plug on this limit switch. Now spin the printer around and attach the other vertical extrusion. Note the position of the holes and make sure the holes are nearer the bottom than the top. Again, leave these bolts a little loose. If you're enjoying this video, then hit like and think about subscribing. I make regular content to help with 3D printing and other projects. We're now going to move on to stage two of the installation in the manual. Find your Z-axis stepper and two M4 by 18 countersunk screws. Place the stepper on the back of the left-hand vertical frame extrusion and screw the bolts through the plastic bracket and into the holes in the frame. Don't do these up tight, we'll need to align the stepper shortly. Just spin the bolts in so the stepper won't fall off. The manual tells you to assemble the Z-height lead screw at this stage, but don't do that yet. I found an issue with mine that I want you to check for later. Looking at the back of the printer, make sure that you check the voltage adjustment switch. You'll need to make sure this is in the position you need for the voltage that you have in your country. You can now plug in the four wire plug for the Z stepper motor. Just make sure that the wires are all out of the way of the bed when it moves back and forth. Now find the remaining extrusions and remove the plastic. The shorter one with the two holes at each end is for the top of the frame. The one we want now is the longer one with six holes in it. This is the X axis profile. We're now on stage three in the user manual. Find the XE axis kit that has the X axis and extruder steppers. Compare the end of the extrusion with the holes in the XE axis kit and you'll see that only one end matches. Be careful not to damage the limit switch here with the end of the extrusion. The bolts will screw into the extrusion from the back. Find two M4 by 16 screws and a box that you can use to sit the parts on as shown. This will make lining everything up much easier. Place both screws through the plate before lining up and screwing them both in. Don't do these up completely as you need to line the extrusion up with the top edge of the plate. Use your thumbs to line up the two pieces before tightening up the screws fully. While we're here, find the pneumatic fitting and screw it into the thread on the top of the extruder stepper motor. Nip this up with a supplied spanner. Now bring the printer base back and slide the nozzle kit onto the end of the extrusion with the nozzle facing down and the stepper motor on the left. It's easy to put this on upside down if you're not paying attention. Ask me how I know. Once it's on, you'll need to adjust the tension of the rollers so that the nozzle kit starts to move when you tilt the extrusion at about 45 degrees. This should give you zero play, but not too much tension to restrict movement. Now find the belt and push the end under the rollers on the top with the teeth face down. Feed the belt through the stepper cover on the left and around the tooth pulley and back through the bottom. The end of the belt will then fit into the slot on the bottom of the nozzle kit plate. Find the x-axis tensioner and take it apart. Unscrew the plastic knob until you can remove the pulley assembly inside. Feed the belt around the pulley and push the pulley assembly back into the housing while lining the screw thread up with a hole. Screw the plastic knob on a few threads so it can't come out and push the housing onto the end of the extrusion with the countersunk hole at the front. Fit the end of the belt to the nozzle kit plate as you did on the other side. Now find the M4x14 countersunk screw in the bag and attach the tensioner housing as shown and check everything moves freely. Find the Z-axis passive block shown in stage four of the user manual. Take care to slide this part under the plastic tensioner housing you just assembled with the rollers at the back as shown. Insert two M4x16 screws and again nip them up, but don't fully tighten until you've checked that the plate is perfectly straight with the extrusion. Now you can gently tighten the plastic tensioner knob to tighten the belt. I started by tightening until it was difficult to twist the belt more than 180 degrees. Keep checking how freely the nozzle kit slides on the extrusion so that you know when it starts to restrict movement. As a guide, there should be between zero and three millimeters of thread sticking out the back of the adjuster knob. If the belt's too loose, it will skip teeth, but if it's too tight, then it will cause excessive wear on components and eventually break. You can now slide the whole X-axis assembly onto the vertical extrusions on the printer base. If it doesn't go on easily, slacken the adjusters. Be careful that the nozzle doesn't touch the bed and don't let the assembly drop as it could damage the limit switch. Once you've wiggled it on, you need to set the tension on the adjuster rollers. You want the rollers to be able to spin if you turn them, but not easily. If you manage to get this, you have the perfect tension. Take your time to make small adjustments to ensure everything's adjusted just right, as all of these small adjustments make a big difference in avoiding printing issues down the line. Now find the remaining extrusion 
and with four M5 by 25 screws, attach the top gantry profile. Make sure that the wiring that goes to your nozzle kit is behind and not in front. Lift the x-axis assembly up to the top before nipping these bolts up. This will set the correct distance across the top of the frame. Now go back to the screws in the bottom of the vertical extrusions and with the x-axis assembly at the bottom, fully tighten these four bolts, two on each side. Don't lay the printer on its side to do this and don't hold the frame as it could twist it. Now go back and fully tighten the top frame bolts. Once everything's tight, check you have full movement on every axis with no binding. Now attach the end of the Bowden tube into the pneumatic fitting as shown. Push it home firmly and then attach a retaining clip to stop it pushing out. Clip the wiring onto the side of the extruder. Find your Z-axis lead screw and thread it down through the threaded hole on the X, E axis plate above the Z-axis stepper. Your Z-axis stepper shouldn't be tight yet. See if the lead screw will slot straight into the coupler without any force. Make sure the pinch bolt on the coupler is loose when you do this. I found mine was nowhere near going in as the stepper was sitting at a funny angle. I took the stepper back off and checked the plastic mounting bracket to find it wasn't straight. Once removed, it was clear to see that the plastic part is not square and it's never going to work. If we were to just force everything together at this point, we're guaranteed to get Z-axis binding and potentially damaged parts. There are a couple of things you can do if you have this problem. You can buy the aluminium version, which I've linked down in the description, or as I did, you can use some coarse wet and dry on a flat surface and gently remove the high spots on the plastic until it sits square. Once the bracket sits square on the stepper motor, everything lines up perfectly. Loosen all bolts where you slide in the lead screw, then nip up all the bolts. Then you can nip up the pinch bolt on the coupler. Check the gap between the lead screw and the frame at the top with the X gantry at the bottom. Then turn the screw to move the gantry to the top and measure again. If there's any difference in these two measurements, you may need to consider spacing out the stepper from the frame at the bottom with some washers until these measurements are the same. As long as the difference is not more than about a millimetre, you should be okay. You may even get away with just loosening the bolts that go down through the mount into the stepper and then moving it closer or further from the frame before tightening again. Check that turning the stepper motor raises the X gantry all the way to the top. It should also gently drop when you push down on the gantry. Make sure all of the wiring is plugged into the steppers and limit switches. Now it's time to fit your display kit. The fixings are the same as the limit switch we installed earlier, but these are a lot more fiddly. Detach the rear bracket from the screen to make fixing easier. I ended up propping the base up on a box for better access, then removing the front nut and placing it inside the extrusion before lining up and threading the screw in. I was able to turn the rear two nuts with a small screwdriver to get them to line up. Take your time and get it right. Once all of the nuts are in, slide the unit forward and tighten all the fixings. Plug the multicolored ribbon cable into the back of the screen, then slide the screen back onto its mounts. Then the best bit, peel the screen protector off. If you're going to use the included spool holder, mount it to the top of the frame with the remaining T-nuts and attach the plastic tube that the spool sits on. Fit the plastic end caps to the top extrusion and fit the extruder knob as shown. This is all shown in stage 8 of the manual. Now remove the protective coating and refit your build plate, trying not to touch the printing surface. If there isn't room for it to slide under the nozzle, then adjust all four bed levelling screws to adjust the bed down so that there's room. Place the clips back on. Once everything's set up, your nozzle is going to home at the height where your Z limit switch clicks. Turn the Z rod to check that when it clicks, the nozzle doesn't hit the build plate. If it's close, just adjust the bed down a little so there's no risk of the nozzle crashing into the bed. Carefully move the nozzle to all four corners to make sure it's not going to hit anywhere. This is where I found another issue. The Y axis stepper had not been fitted straight. The way I noticed it was that the bed actually hit it when I slid it back after adjusting it to be clear of the nozzle. It's a simple fix by just loosening the two fixings, straightening it and then tightening again. This would have also caused premature belt wear, so check yours is straight to the frame and clear of the bed. If even with the stepper square, your bed still touches the stepper when the limit switch is clicking, loosen the screws on the limit switch bracket and adjust it up slightly and re-tighten. This will give you the clearance you need. Your Ender 3 version 2 is now fully assembled and you're ready to level or tram your bed. Before you can print, you need to do three things. You need to tram your bed, you need to load filament and you need to slice a file to load onto your SD card. You'll be pleased to hear I have guide videos to show you how to do all of these things and none of them are as involved as the setup you've just done. Click on one of these videos to move to one of the next steps or click on this playlist to see all the videos that will help you. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on the next videos that I'm currently making. Thanks for watching.